Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do some card making together and I'm actually recording this live to tape so um, you can kind of see in real time how we make these cards. They're a lot of fun. They'd be fun to batch up and mail to friends and um, we do a little decorating on the inside as well, which I love. And then this can actually be removed if somebody wanted to reuse the card, which I think is super pretty. So um, this is kind of an origami feel and the inspiration for these cards is the stamp set by Quetzalcraft. This video is brought to you by TopFlightStamps.com. You can find all the supplies I'm using there for the most part. And um, they are open and shipping and they find all the coolest stamps from around the world and bring them to us here in the United States. So I really thought this was elegant and pretty. I love Quetzalcraft stamps anyways. I find their designs are so pretty. And um, usually they're a little bit more on the quirky and weird side, but I just thought this was elegant and it would make really pretty friendship cards. I also thought that this um, word sentence strip from Darkroom Door, also available at our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com. Um, I thought this would be great because there's so many nice little sentiments in here that aren't like a happy birthday or thank you. You know, this is the time to send cards to friends just because. And I thought any of these little sentiments would be really great on these cards. So the first thing I did actually was I dug in my stash and I found some origami paper. And I don't tend to do origami and it's kind of too thin for most card making, but it works really well for stamping these little birds. And I use stays on ink because this is a really glossy, almost like a magazine type of paper, and that just makes sure it will dry. So there's a little thing you want to do ahead of time and then cut them out. And I just put them in my little, um, this little dish here so I'd have them to uh, to grab as I was creating. And when I'm doing a batch card project, I try to work in steps and get all kinds of stuff done ahead of time. And that will make our crafting together a little bit more, um, a little bit easier too. You're also going to need a card base, and I'm going to use black here. Here. This is just a piece of a half a sheet of heavyweight black cardstock, and I am going to blast it with my heat tool. Now, I do this because I'm going to do some heat embossing, and if I use the embossing pouch, like with the powder in it, the powder bag, um, it gives me kind of a little bit of a cloudy haze on it. But by just hitting your paper with a heat tool, will do the exact same thing that an embossing pouch will, but it doesn't leave a powdery residue. So, we're going to emboss anyway. We got the gun out, might as well do it. So, uh, you can do it either way because it's moisture in the paper that makes your embossing powder stick where it shouldn't. So this stamp here is really pretty. It's like a, a almost like a, well, it's like a little bead curtain kind of of paper cranes. I thought that was really pretty. And I've done this in two different ways. I've done it once with a metallic ink, a purple metallic ink, and I did one with just a VersaFine or VersaMark clear ink. And I'm gonna show you the different effects you get. So with the clear ink and this iridescent peacock embossing powder, I got this very kind of faint, just a uh, glossy blue and then when I did it with a metallic ink it kind of gave me more of a silvery uh, greenish look which I thought was kind of funny because I used like a purpley metallic ink but I just like the I thought it was a little bit brighter just using the VersaFine so that's what I'm going to use so the color underneath this embossing powder will make a difference this is just called iridescent peacock I've had this for years and years and years and years so if you have any sort of iridescent powder or any powder you like just go ahead and use it. If you use a translucent powder, it'll just show shiny. And if you have one with color in it, um, or if you have a translucent powder, it'll show whatever ink color you're using. I'm using clear, so you could use a colored ink. But if you have a colored powder, it's just gonna show you whatever your powder is. The nice thing about Versamark ink, the clear stuff, is that it conditions your stamps, so you don't need to wash your stamps after you use this, and it will actually leave your stamps in better shape than when you left them. It's a good tip for reviving those old stamps that maybe have gone dry and hard. Glycerin will do the exact same thing too. So I'm just going to put this here, and by the way, I'm stamping on a um, newsprint pad. You could stamp on a mouse pad, an old magazine. As you can see, I have no cushion on my stamps, because what I do when I get this set of stamps is I um, paint some aliens, tack it over and over on the back after I trim them, and then I just don't use cushion. It saves me storage space, it saves me money, and I don't find that I need to have anything any cushion on these, especially these really bold designs. They just don't really need it. So now I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper so that I can do my embossing. I'm going to give this a nice generous coating of my embossing powder. I'm not too particular about embossing powder. As long as it works, I don't really care what brand it is. Um, and I think probably a lot of the embossing powders I have, because if you take care of it, you keep it in its original containers, it'll last you a long time. So, um, so I'm not really that fussy about what brands I use. 
And this one here, since it's clear, if you do get any stray glitter, it's just going to look like glitter. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this. Um, this is not my the best embossing gun just because it's not quite as hot as others, but um, it will get the job done. So I'm just going to go ahead and heat it and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, that's all heat embossed. Look how pretty that is. I mean, I really don't think you need a color underneath it. It's just subtle and really nice. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use for my paper or leftover bird that I'll put on the inside. So um, I'm gonna set this aside and just grab a panel of white. And I wanna show you a little tip here. I went through my scraps and I cut down all my solid colored cardstock to standard sizes. And it just makes it really easy for when I'm doing a background. So. Um, you know, just something to think about that if that might be useful to you. Um, I found it very useful to me. All right, we're going to do a cloudy background like I did in these two. Now, I did one where I embossed while the ink was still wet. I just embossed the whole panel, and I think it's really pretty. I don't know if it shows in camera so much, but it's got that pretty iridescence. And this one, I just wanted to emboss the lines, uh, but then I realized well, I'm covering that up with the, with the cutout, so it didn't really make much sense. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show you how I did the whole background because I thought it was really pretty. And we're going to start off with inks. And I'm going to use this blue ink. This is a Harmony by Spectrum Noir. Prism, Distress Ink, any sort of reactive ink is going to work really well for this. And I'm just inking up my little blending tool. You can use a sponge, you can use a like a color duster. doesn't really matter what you use for your blending tool. Whatever you find works the best for you. And I'm going to start off in this corner. I'm going to, my fingers are a little inky, but I'm going to try just kind of hold everything in place so it doesn't shift on me. And I start the inking on the stencil. And this is just a handmade stencil that um, I made for my die, leftover die cuts that I had. Top Flight Stamps does have a, a couple nice cloud stencils if you are looking for something plastic. Um, definitely a worthwhile investment if you do a lot of these. Not that expensive either. Okay. And bring it down. I'm going to do one more with the blue. Probably should have gone upstairs and washed my hands. Okay. Now, before I change my, move my stencil, I'm actually going to go to the next color. I'm going to go to some purple. Again, this is the Harmony pad. Start on my, um, my stencil, just gently bring it over. And then I like to back up a little bit and just do a very, very gentle blush of color that way. And then start in with my more strong purple. This gives me kind of a really nice sunset effect. I think is really, um, I don't know, I just think it's really flattering. Oops, I started on the paper, don't do that. Start on the, uh, start on the template. And I'm going to back it up a little bit with the leftover on my brush. I don't want to add more ink when I back it up. I just want to kind of use up some that's on my brush. And I'm getting ink all over that. I don't even know how I'm doing that. Let's just uh, work it in then. I think that'll be fine. Okay, let's go on to the pink. I'm going to, the, going to go to the pink, but I'm going to stay with that purple brush. I'm just going to try to knock off some of the extra I'm trying to figure out where in heck do I have the purple ink on my hands. I've got it all over there. That is so weird. Anyway, that's a mystery for another time. Oh, and I started on the paper again. I gotta stop that. Start on the template. At least the brushes are a little bit more forgiving with that. Now I'm gonna go to red. And I'm going to try to get some of that, uh, go cover over some of that purple. That'll be a great place to put a sentiment, though, so don't worry about it. I'm actually going to switch over here. I try to remember to switch onto the other side of my template when I'm doing warm colors so I don't get mud. I feel like I want a little more pink in there. I'll do the pink with this uh, with this brush. So top tip is to plan on putting your sentiment wherever you've got a messy 
spot in your background. All right, so then, then for the last step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. I just want to, that seems a little bit harsh there. There we go. Maybe actually before I do that, I'm going to go in once with the purple again because I don't like that little area there. That's looking a little weird. I feel like I need a little more purple there. I am really out of practice on doing live narrated uh, tutorials. <laughs> so if it's a little extra hot mess this this week, then that's why. Okay, so now I'm going to take my just my yellow brush. I'm going to take a little yellow ink here. This is mustard seed. I think bright yellow is going to be fine. I'm going to tap it off on my paper. I'm actually going to start up here and just hit those clouds up there. Now I try to just kind of get the white edges of stuff so I don't end up with mud. And if I feel like I'm getting debris on my brush and I just go in and I um, and I just kind of tap it off, I'll just wipe it off on my rag. Now you can always wash these brushes if they do get muddy so you know if they get dirty don't just wash them and let them air dry before you use them again you'll be good. Okay, there is our crazy cloudy background. I apologize for the um, the furnace. I was going to shut it off, but that always feel weird about shutting off the furnace. I always feel like it's going to do something weird to my house. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And we're going to stamp a few of the birds here in the background. And I've got them all on different mounts here. I'm actually going to try to use some I haven't used yet. I think I've used them all at least once, but... I'm just trying to think about that because I, I you know, want to make sure I have enough of the uh, the background, my paper pieces, my origami paper things. Okay, so I'm going to ink up this one, I think. So some of these have strings attached and some don't. Okay, inking it up. Now, I recommend if you get your ink on the block, wipe it off before you stamp. That way you won't end up getting the edge on your... Um, on your background because you know we've already messed up once and we only have really I mean how many sentiments do we want to put in this card you don't have to get creative with embellishments if we mess up too many more times so that's <laughs> that's my advice make sure you have enough things to cover up your mistakes you know, let's put that one in the middle And stamping on this newsprint is really great. It gives you just the right amount of squish, and then you've got all that uh, that paper that you can catch your leftover inks. Um, and then we want one more. We want to do one that's got a string on it as well. I think that's one I just did. Let's see. We got this one right here. Yeah, that one would work pretty well. And you just want to use a nice, um, a nice good black ink that stamps really well. One I stamped on the origami paper I used stays on because it was a slick surface, and I knew other inks wouldn't dry. This is um, just some black pigment ink I'm using here. I'm gonna try to make sure my string is going to be fairly straight. If it's a little bit off, that's fine. It could be blown in the wind. Not going to worry about it. Oh, those stamped out pretty well, actually. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to grab a straight edge and just draw a line. I think I've had this little triangle since I was in junior high. It's like a Bonnie Bell Lip Smacker stationery set I had once. I still have like a compass and ruler and protractor from that. And then I'll just do a little knot so it matches the uh, the other ones. All right, so the ink should still be wet from my ink blending there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take advantage of that by doing my embossing over the entire panel. So this is going to give a clear, iridescent um, look all over the panel. It's the same powder we used on the inside. Um, but since it's clear, it's going to show what's underneath. I think this is so pretty. And actually, if you've ever done that glitter sheet stamping technique where you, you use like a heavy weight adhesive and you, um, you coat your paper with that, then you stamp on it and then you color it with Copic markers, you could do that over this, I'm pretty sure, and it would work out just fine. So I'm going to dump that, before I do anything else actually, I'm going to dump that right in the jar so I don't spill it 
hate to waste this stuff. It's so pretty. And it, you know, that's the thing about embossing powder. I feel like it's one of those things that you never, you never use up. I mean, I've used up some like ultra thick embossing because you just physically use so much of that. But for most embossings, I don't find that I use it that much. All right, so here we go. We're going to heat this up. Another tip I have is to use a, once you've he, uh, heated up an area, use a clothespin. Let that cool and use a clothespin to hold it. And then you can get the rest of the panel perfectly. This is going to take a few minutes because this, this uh, heat gun isn't too strong. And we'll be back after that is all heated. All right, the panel's all dry. Look how sparkly it is. This is really nice if you want to send this to a card, uh, send this card to somebody who does not like glitter or who doesn't like the mess of glitter because the um, the glitter here is not it's not transferable. It's not gonna like it's not gonna get on anybody. I'm trying to figure out what exact birds I've got here. I'm like batting a thousand. Oh wait, wait. You know what? Oh no, that's not it. I think it's this one. It's this one. That's one of them. And then I'll like try to just kind of figure the placement to make sure that I've got the um, I've got the best one that next to the clouds, just to make sure that oh that one looks good. But I might not want a pinkish one there or a peachy one there because there's so many peachy cl colored clouds there. So I might want to go with a different one. Like and I probably wouldn't want two greens together. So I'll just kind of like, and that, see, I got a lot of blues that in that area, so I don't really, I don't really want to use that one there. That's not even one that I'm using. That's another peach one. I seem to have a lot of peach ones here. There's another peach one for that. That one, the peach one would work good there, but I want to do something. I want a different color for that one. Oh, I hope I have a different color for that one. I might have to go stamp one. Let me see. Or I could just go with all those. Actually, that one's got a lot of yellow on it. That one's got more peach on it. That could probably that could probably work. But let me just see what else I have. Man, that furnace. I'll be so glad when winter's done. Maybe sometime in July, winter will be done here. Yeah, that's gonna. I'm gonna use that. That's gonna be fine. So the thing is, it's a little difficult to stick down to this glossy surface so what I'm gonna do is actually this is a Tombow mono multi glue and this I've noticed will stay sticky so you could put some on there and then it will be sticky so what I'm gonna do is actually put some on here and let it set up for a few minutes and that way it will grab a little bit better I'm also gonna cut the beaks off of my paper cuts because the beaks are dark on the uh, stamped image and I like that better so uh, I'm going to let these dry and I'm going to snip off the beaks and we'll be back in a second and finish assembling the card. We'll give that a couple more seconds to set up and while we do that we will decorate the inside of the card base. Like you can see it's black so if you were to write on it you'd need a um, like a metallic or a gel pen and plus I like to add a little insert just so that it can be reused. Um, you can do whatever you like. This does cover up, the size of my insert covers up the side stamping a little bit. Um, so you can make your smaller or like I mentioned you could write right on the thing. And then um, I am going to glue down this little paper crane. I think that blue is pretty. I'm actually going to adjust that down just a little bit. I like washi tape. It removes very easily. And uh, there's so many pretty designs. You probably have a lot in your stash that could be used. Now if I just glue this on the bottom half, then that crane won't be damaged when it's um, if that center piece is taken out and reused. And since I'm going paper to paper and it's not like shiny or glossy or anything, um, it's not like on top of that plasticky embossed stuff, I can just glue that right down and then I can just shut my card and it will be fine. That'll be plenty of adhesive. As long as nothing's seeping out, I don't have to worry about it squirting out from the bottom of that and getting damaged. And then um, what I'm going to do is gently move these little pieces waiting to glue down that have the adhesive on the back. Uh, off of my card base because I want to put this on first and the reason for that is I when I stamped that paper crane his wing goes off the edge and so I'll probably let the uh, the cut out the paper piece bird go off the edge as well and to adhere this onto my card base I'm just going to use double sided tape there goes the furnace again I can't catch a break <laughs> I did uh, I did shut the camera off I let those uh, dry because the water pump went on 
all the joys of filming in the basement. Have you missed that? Have you missed that with my slick voiced over tutorials? You'll have to let me know in the comments below uh, if you prefer the voiceover shorter videos with no weird noises in the background or the real life basement um, basement noises. You could actually, I mean, I got plenty of those left over. I could put more birds in there if I wanted to. Um, got a bunch of stray powder there, but that can be brushed off with a soft brush. All right, I think now that this is kind of a little bit clear, you can see it's not white anymore, that's going to stick very well, and I just need to line it up on top of my stamped image. It's hard to line these birds up without the beaks. It's hard to orient them, uh, these little origami birds, but there's only three, so it's not too bad. So letting this one go off the edge, I'm just going to flip it over and just snip off that tiny little bit that hangs over. The glitter, the glitter embossing powder does get everywhere where you're crafting with it, but by the time it gets its de gets to its destination, it shouldn't be um, losing glitter everywhere. <laughs> I don't, I, and I never get how people are so upset with like glitter cards, like the glitter going everywhere. I kind of like it; it doesn't bother me. Right, where's this guy's head? Here we go. You could also use double-sided tape. I think that's pretty. And I, I just like because the the beaks are kind of shadowed. I think it's kind of pretty to let that uh, let that be un like unpapered. All right. So whether you want to add a sentiment on there is up to you. I stamped some out and just um, oops, I got something on that one, and just mounted them on some black cardstock. And let's see. Oh, maybe the journey is your reward. Say yes to new adventures. God, you know what? I set my stamping, my cleaning rag on top of that. That's why that's all messed up. Oh, yeah. I thought, I've done this card twice. I am so practiced. I'm going to do this without any flaws. It's going to be perfect. Probably in one take. I've done several clips so far. <laughs> I didn't even cut this out straight. Uh... But that's all right. You know what? I think that's fine. And that actually, it's one of the reasons I really like the Quetzalcraft stamps, because they're kind of wonky. And I, you know, if I'm trimming things out by hand, they're going to be wonky. If I'm cutting things out by hand, if I'm, you know, stenciling and inking, there's going to be, there's going to be some imperfection. And that's fine. And, but if you have this, like, kind of, like, constant imperfection over the card, then I think it looks like it's meant to be that way. It's supposed to be that way. You know, versus if everything's perfect, then you have one thing that's not quite right. Then it really stands out that it's not perfect. I'm going to use, uh, maybe embellish with a couple little black pearls. That way I can cover up that because I didn't want to put my sentiment over there. That's what I intended to do, but I actually didn't see the mistake when I was, uh, because of the, gl the gloss from the, from the embossing powder. Uh, oh, maybe I'll do, I'll do a little cascade. I recommend if you use these pearls, I think I'm going to put that one. Um, if you get these pearls, don't hoard them, use them because the adhesives, after a while, they don't want to, they don't want to come up with your, that's going to have to be glued. They don't want to come up with your, with your embellishment. They want to stick to the sheet, which is really annoying. I try not to let this stuff go out from the edge too much because it is a little sticky when it dries. That's why we could, um, that's why we could move it. Let's why well, you could like let that set up and then stick that down on there. Um, oh, let's see. Maybe I'll luck out and this little tiny one will be. Oh, I think I did pick up the backing. Good. I always wonder how long these actually like. Oh, shoot. Mm, I can't tell if the glue that I have on my finger goes to that embellishment or if it's just random glue on my finger. Oh, now it's stuck to my finger. Oh my gosh. Now I'll use my fingernail to scooch it into place and move that. Ah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good enough. Hopefully it hopefully it lives on that card long enough to get to its destination. And uh, and I'll be happy. And I've got a few of these left over for other cards. I've got some birds left over to make some other cards with. There's the inside. I think it's pretty. I brush off. They just use a soft brush. 
um, to brush off any extra glitter. Um, I think they're really cute. I think they're fun. This is such a pretty stamp set. And um, I hear there's some new stuff coming out from Quetzalcraft that we'll be showcasing next month. Heaven sakes, I just... This one, this one does not want to stick. I'm adding glue. Hopefully that'll be the end of that and that'll just stay where it's supposed to. Yeah, so anybody watching this, if you happen to get this card in the mail and it's missing some gems, <laughs> you'll know why. <laughs> and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please check out our sponsor, topflightstamps.com and you can find the stamps I used. You can find all sorts of good stuff, inks, embellishments, lots of goodies from all over the world brought back to us here in the United States and they are shipping. So if you're just totally jonesing for some craft supplies, they can get them to you. Uh, thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps my uh, videos get seen by more crafters and I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.